this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Explain the journal entry for issuing bonds at a discount and the journal entries for uh, interest and amortization. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So if we see an essay question like this or a discussion question and we don't know where to start, we can start by just defining bonds and what, what are bonds, what does it mean to issue the bond? Uh, a bond is usually gonna be a way of financing for the company. So we're looking to get money for the company and we're gonna issue bonds for that in a similar way as getting a, a loan. So the bond then is gonna be a, a promise, a promise to repay uh, in accordance with the terms of the bond. And the bond will typically promise to repay a face amount. So if we had something on the bond here of a thousand dollar bond, and they're typically in terms of thousands, so we can issue multiple bonds typically in terms of thousands and whatever rate is on the bond, then we're gonna say we're gonna pay back uh, the 1,000 at the end of the bond, plus the interest rate over however long the term of the bond is. Um, and so that's just the, what the bond is gonna be. It's a promise to repay, why? Because we're gonna get cash uh, for it. It's a financing option. So then we can think of, well, what's, the, what's gonna be the journal entry when we first issue the bond? And remember the purpose of the bond for us, the company, is to get money. So we're trying to get money. So cash is gonna be the purpose. So we're gonna say cash is affected and cash is going up when we issue the bond. Um, we're gonna, now I'm not gonna write down the cash yet because we don't know really what it is that we're gonna get. So what we, we're gonna have bond payable and that's gonna be why we're getting the cash, kind of like loan payable, we owe it back in the future. We know what that is, it's $1,000, it's the amount on the bond. And then we got to determine how to get a discount. What does it mean to be a discount? Well, the discount would mean if you're purchasing something and you're saying the sticker price is a thousand, if we paid less than a thousand, that's what would be a discount typically. So that's the same thing here. We're gonna say, well, here's the face amounts of thousand. If we pay something less than a thousand, if we pay say 900, then we're gonna have a discount of 100. And we can see that if you start to make the journal entry, that's gonna have to be a debit. So even if it weren't asking for a journal entry, it's, it's useful to write out the journal entry, even if it's very sloppy, even if they don't give you numbers, because that'll tell you things like, is it a debit or credit? It'll help your mind to think through this thing. So that's gonna be the discount. And there, there we have it. So there's our journal entry to basically record. It's very sloppy, but there's gonna be our, our journal entry to record uh, the, the bond, to put it on the books. Now, then the question of course is, well, how, why is this discount there? Why would we want to pay something back at the end, 1,000 and have this discount on it? Why, why, would they, why wouldn't we want $1,000 for it? <laughs> Where does the discount come from? And it's the difference between the interest rates. So the market rate and the rate stated rate. The bond here, this is fixed on the bond. We can't change it, it's already written. So we got the 1,000, we got the 10%, we can't change that. What we can change is how much people pay us for the bond. So that depends on the interest rate on the market, meaning we're trying to sell our bond for $1,000, but if someone else on the market saying, hey, if I give my $1,000 somewhere else, I can get a return at 12%, and you're only paying 10% on that bond. They're not gonna buy our bond for $1,000 because we're not paying as much interest as they could get elsewhere. It's like trying to rent an apartment for more than, <laughs> then other people are renting the exact same type of apartment. So we're gonna have to sell it for something less, and that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, and that's the thousand dollars, that would be a discount. If on the other hand, of course, the, the rate was something less here on the market, then the market would go somewhere else. They would, they would go somewhere else, say, I can, I can only get 6%, I wanna buy your bond for a thousand. And then we at that point would say, well, no, we're not gonna sell it for a thousand because we know you can only get 6% somewhere else. So that would be like selling our our apartment complex to somebody under what other people are selling the exact same complex for. 
So we would say, no, we want something more. Then we, we would sell it at a premium. So the discount or premium, you can think of it as just, it just means that you're, uh, a discount means that you're, the purchaser is buying it for less than the face amount and a premium is buying it more, but then you have to link it to these interest rates. The reason is because of these interest rates. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is record the interest and uh, the, the amortization of the discount. You can actually think of those as two separate journal entries if you want, although they're usually combined. The interest rate, uh, to, to pay the interest, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say, we're gonna credit cash and we're gonna debit the interest for whatever we pay. What are we gonna pay? The face amount of the bond times the interest rate on the bond and then we're gonna adjust it for whatever time period we are looking at. If it's a six month bond, we'll adjust it for a six month time period. Uh, so in that case, it would be the 1,000 times 10% divided by two for six months. Uh, and then we'll, we'll record that. So that'll be a debit to interest expense, credit to cash. And then we can think about the discount. What are we gonna do with this discount? Now, remember this discount's really a difference between this, these interest rates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna make it go to zero by the end of this thing, and we're gonna record it to the other side, which is gonna go to interest expense. So you could think about that as a separate journal entry. <clears throat> and the easiest way to think about it is just uh, if we were to do a straight line kind of amortization method, which isn't the preferred method, but that's the easiest way to think through it first. So you would just take the 1,000 divided by however many time periods you have, which, you know, if it's a two year note and it's semi-yearly uh, semi payments, there'd be four time periods. So we just take that 100 divided by four, and then we're just gonna reduce this each time period over four time periods till it goes to zero. If we did that with a straight line method, we would just take the 100 divided by the time periods, make the journal entry, which if we did it separately, would simply be, this is a debit balance, so we'd have to credit it to make it go away. So we would credit it by, by uh, whatever we come to on the straight line method and then debit the interest expense. So we would be writing it off to interest expense each time period. Now the effective method would be the preferred method and that's just gonna be doing the same thing, but it's not gonna have an even amount each time because we're trying to, it's gonna be similar to us figuring out what the interest would be for like a loan that's being amortized on an installment loan. The amount allocated to interest in principal will differ because the, the carrying amount will differ. So uh, that would be the preferred, it's a little bit more complex to, to calculate, but the end result will be the same. It just means the interest amounts will differ uh, from period to period, but we'll end up with the discount being zero. So what will the journal entry look like typically? We'll typically combine those two. So you probably wanna combine those two and say, we'll have a journal entry, which will basically be looking like this. We're going to say that it's gonna debit interest expense. It's gonna credit the discount and then it's gonna credit cash for whatever cash we pay. And we're gonna repeat that journal entry uh, for however many time periods there are until the end, uh, the, the last time period of the bond. And at that point in time, the discount should be down to zero and we should just be left with the bond, uh, the bond payable. And then we're just gonna pay off the bond payable. It's just like if it was a note that was matured, we're gonna credit cash for a thousand and we're gonna debit the bond payable.